Well, in this video, it's more a bonus video. I'm going to show you a bit more in-depth things on what we did with Titan for the VAT characters. So as you can see here in Houdini, you have the setup that we made. So we just have our character with our animation, so we can make multiple of them if you want to. So that's like the base ID behind this behind this setup. So as you can see here in real, I have a bunch of these characters. They're all vertex animations. So here, if I go to my information, I just have a mesh and a text and a shader. There's no skeletal bones in here. So I just have like a few of them. And what I will do with them is that you can actually see that they are slightly different from each other. Like some of them have like different colors, different hairstyles, things like that. So every time I, for example, now grab this character and if I move it around, you will see it start to have variation on the clothing and so on. So this is mainly done with the shaders. Uh, there, of course, can many different ways on how you can do this. So I've done this with a couple of shader tricks. Uh, and then you can quickly build a variation. So this is still like some more, I would say, prototypish experiment. Uh, but they might be bringing you some ideas for your own production and so on. So in Houdini, what we will do is if, for example, here I brought in an example mesh. So instead of having like one single mesh, uh, I just basically start to overlap different styles of, for example, clothing into one mesh. So you can see here we have like multiple stuff merged together. So here, if I break it down, you can see that we have like multiple things on the character. So I have a face, I have hair, I have a couple shirts, uh, I have an option for a longer arm or a shorter arm. I have like pants, short pants, long pants and so on, like we just store multiple meshes on top of each other and then you have a character like so. And then in this shader we will then basically mask away what is needed or not needed for the character variation. So that's sort of like the first step is you need to have like multiple clothes, you just put them all on top of each other and then you, you animate that mesh uh, by using Mixum or, or other tools you have available. And then you do the same process here uh, by just saving out them to vertex animation with animation here. So what is a bit more special here in terms of like how all the data all the data is handled is first of all you can see that I have used a color. So the vertex color is controlling where the main parts are of the character. So the green one is for controlling the shirts and the shoes. Blue one is controlling the pants color. Red is controlling the hair, and when the value is black, you will see that this is for then controlling the skin color. So those are what the vertex colors are doing and controlling uh, for coloring in Game Engine. And this is sort of what you can see here, is I am coloring here the hair, the, the clothes, the pants, the skin colors, all driven by uh, the vertex colors here. So this will be all driven by vertex colors. So what I'm basically doing is I'm lurping between the random values, as you can see. Um, so I get the character positions. This is how do I get the random value, or it's sort of like a random based on position. Um, this is sort of like a quick way on doing this. Is I get the is first of all I need to get the position data. So I get the object position. Then I just break this down into a. Uh, floats, then I just get the absolute value, add them to each other, and then use an F mod. And then this is sort of like, as you can see here, this is my lerp value. So all these, uh, so all these are my lerping value. Uh, you can do other things. You can also do uh, a random from instance. If you are doing instances, you can just also uh, use that as well. Uh, but in this case, this is purely based on position data. So whenever I move around my character, as you saw, so whenever I move this around, we will basically generate new values with this system. So now I have my new value, then I will basically with that value decide if this, for example, for the clothing, if it should be going to the blue color or to the white color. Um, so once that is decided, I then uh, use the vertex color here to then actually make like the final version of that so as you can see like i'm multiplying that vertex color with that and then i just add as you can see i add everything together now so all the different parts are then added and then it will make my final output 
so that's sort of roughly here how that works there are other methods you can to add other colors and variation but sort of like that's how it worked here then the second part is also in terms of like how can i now hide or define what sort of like clothing style or meshes i need to view and not view and that is stored in the uv so here in the uv if i make this a bit bigger so you can see that each chunk I store different data. So this data contains a certain information. So each block here contains information. So the first block basically contains the skin color. So everything in here is uh, for skin color. Then this is, for example, for shirt variation one, shirt variation two, shirt variation three. This is then the pants. This is then the hair. This is then the, the other hairstyle, and this is then something else. And you can just keep adding more and more of these. Every unique style of mesh, like for example, a t-shirt or a pants, or if I were to add, for example, a hat, the top hat or something, I would have to create a new chunk of that. And this will then be the UV data of the top hat. And so why is this needed? Why did I create those chunks? And that's simply here because of this texture. So let me grab this texture over here. And you can see that this texture holds uh, very unique pixels. It's also just like 10 by 10 pixels. And this is then basically deciding what meshes to show. So the top part was the skin color. So that's always needs to be shown. So this is white. You can almost see this like a checking box. So this is just basically saying that uh, for style one, we have our skin color. We have a shirt. We have pants. We have shirt number one. We have pants number one. We have our shoes, we have a hair, and so on. And then for style number two, we go on to the next row of pixels. We decide that we don't want shirt number one, but shirt number two. We want to have like this this uh, style of pants, for example, and that we just want nothing. So you can see like this is sort of like a checking box or a keeping track of what type of style should now be shown. Um, and next, this is then exactly what is going on here. Um, so again, I will do the same thing as before. So I try to get a random value, as you can see, just from the position. Uh, then I'm also here uh, doing the F mod with in value number three, because I have three different uh, types of styles, or actually four, because zero, one, two, three. Uh, then I round this up to an actual integer. Uh, I divide this to 10, because my texture is 10 by 10 pixels so we divide this to 10 uh, and then we have to only add this to uh, the u not to v so my uv coordinates are breaked up into the u and the v so only here add the offset value to that so let me quickly here preview my texture so what will happen is here whenever i have for example value number two uh, you will see that you will see that my texture will move up so based on so based on my random generator over here, we will get this number in a random way. So sometimes it will be two, sometimes it will be one. So let's say one, and then you can see that this row then different. So again, like this first row of pixels is the only thing that matters. So this is actually containing what type of style I would like to see. And so that's kind of sort of how that system works. So it's just basically like a random value offsetting this texture. This is sort of like the checkbox that controls what mesh should be shown or not shown. And this is then directly here uh, plugged into my opacity mask. So we are just having a masked material and we are masking away the things that we don't need. So we don't need, for example, certain clothing styles based on the checking box. And that's mainly how this shader works. So we have a part for uh, masking away the the models because we are overlapping multiple models so we are masking away them and i have a part here for adding random colors uh, so every time we move we have random random models and masks um, and then we end up with a result like this where i can move my character and we have like different variation i can also rotate them and i will also have different uh, looks so of course this is something that could have been a bit more expanded with different things but this is more of a test setup that I did here with Project Titan. Uh, there are more possibilities with this. Uh, and also I did some offsetting of the animation. So you can see that even though both of these characters have the same animation, they both 
have different starting frames. So again, I use that position data, so object position, and then multiply that by time or add a, or add that value to the time, and then you just have a time offsetting there. Same animation being used again, and it looks like it just have sort of like this conversation, but you just like both play the same animation uh, on a different uh, offset. And that was it for this video. So I hope this video has cleared up some more information about how these characters were created and how we can also get some more automatic variation. So I mainly relied on, so I mainly relied on using shader tricks and storing data in textures and meshes. Uh, but you can also use other tricks to do all kinds of variation. You can also, for example, start using blueprints and build a blueprint system that, for example, spawns different characters with different properties and so on. So there is a lot of things you can do. I do hope this video helped you inspiring with these ideas. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video.